Welcome to Your Gal Friday, a podcast about female leaders, innovators, and rule breakers. Each week, your hosts, Leah and Phoebe, will shine a spotlight on an amazing gal and talk about what we can all learn from her. Brought to you by Gal's Guide to the Galaxy. Welcome to Your Gal Friday. I'm Phoebe Freer, and today we're doing things a little differently. So Leah had some family issues that she needed to tend to, so this week you get just little old me. And boy, do we have a fast ride ahead of us today. We're going the distance and wrapping up our Sports Gal series in our epilogue show. Plus, this doubles as our Season 2 finale episode. Can you believe we're already at the end of Season 2? I can't. It's been a crazy ride. It's just insane. Now, first, let's talk about our sports gals and see what we learned from them along the way. Now, to recap, the gals we covered were Janet Guthrie, a race car driver, Babe Didrikson Zaharias, which she was what I call an overachiever athlete, meaning that she did literally everything. And we covered Conchita Cintron, who was a bullfighter. Now, I was scared at first learning about these gals. As you may know, I'm not a big sports person. I don't generally watch sports or tend to care about teams or anything, and the closest thing to a sport that I do is run. Although, I did go to basketball camp in the summer before sixth grade, and I was awarded three out of the four first prize ribbons and one third prize. But, so... At one point, maybe I could have been good at basketball. Maybe. But other than that, running is about all I got. However, starting off the season with Janet Guthrie, the race car driver, was awesome. Learning more about race car driving and getting to understand more about why my dad, uncle, and grandfather all enjoy it so much. I mean, I grew up watching NASCAR with my dad every Sunday. In fact, when I moved out... Sometimes I would, I still go over on Sunday just to watch NASCAR with my dad. It's just kind of a thing. Plus, the fact that Janet was really a driving force in her field was just incredible to watch as we studied her. She really drived with me from the start. Then there was Babe Dedrusen Zaharias, the all overachiever, over round, all around athlete. She often exaggerated her own life, and she was fiercely competitive. Now, there's something to be said about that ambition. I jived a bit less with Babe personally, but I did appreciate her story. And then we have Conchita, who was just fascinating and difficult to research for me. Turns out both Leah and her husband know Spanish at least a little bit. Then there's me, who hasn't studied Spanish in far too long, and I fell especially behind. I mean, to be honest, Leah w- did the most of the research for this one, and she totally rocked it. I kind of dropped the ball, but she was amazing and made it look completely easy, so I give her mad props for that. Now, these gals did play a role in changing how I view sports. I mean, with Janet, of course, I got a deeper look into NASCAR and just race car driving in general. I didn't realize the mass complicatedness of it. And I definitely have an even bigger respect for race car drivers than before. Now, as Leah said in a previous episode, I don't know why it seems so weird to watch people switch sports, because I guess it's kind of like switching jobs and careers. But Babe Didrikson Zaharias really showed us what it's like to switch jobs, so to speak. And it really, really opened my eyes as to why people do that even in the sports field. Now, with Conchita, I really didn't understand or even really appreciate bullfighting, to be honest. Um, But now that I understand the nuances of it all, it's kind of beautifully tragic. And now I understand the portents of it in the context of that time period. And the way I see it, understanding breeds different viewpoints to any type of situation. Now, the person who surprised me the most was probably Babe. I honestly had no idea how many sports she really played. I mean, you look on her Wikipedia or something and you get the highlights reel, but you still don't see right off the bat how many sports she actually played. I mean, it wasn't just the big ones with um, baseball, track, golf. She did more. She did bowling. I mean, it's that's 
that's not even all. She did not stick with one thing for very long, and she only lived to be in her 40s, which is pretty incredible. I mean, she was so young when she died, but she probably lived more life than most. Now, the person I probably connected to the most in our Sports Gal series was probably Janet. I pretty much loved her from the start. The little girl inside of me that wanted to understand her father, plus the woman I am now, was just blown away at the magnitude of what it means to drive a car at over a 100 miles per hour. I mean, just think about it. In the episode about Janet Guthrie, I mentioned how crazy and exhilarating it was for me to ride my bicycle. Just imagining 100 miles per hour and you're controlling that car is, it's crazy to think about. It, it seems almost inhuman. So it just blows my, not, my mind every time I think about it. Now, the biggest similarity I saw in these gals was determination and passion. Now, the biggest similarity I saw with these gals was determination and passion. They were all rule breakers, and they all paved the way for women in their eras and their sports. And they all did it with pride, grace, and skill. It's awe-inspiring, honestly. In every sport, in every arena, in every way that they did their own thing, they were all incredible, and they did it in their own way, which was just really cool to watch. Now, the biggest differences between these gals were obviously the different types of sports that they all played. I mean, those were vastly different. We got race car driving, we got track, baseball, basketball, golf, and then we've got bullfighting. But aside from that... I'd say that Babe was a bit louder than the others. I mean, meaning that she wanted the publicity and she wanted to make it a big deal. And the other women dealt with the publicity too, but they didn't egg it on quite as much. Um, plus, Babe played sports until the day she died, unlike Janet and Conchita, who both eventually retired from their sports. Also, Babe was the only one who switched so often. Conchita basically stuck with bullfighting, although she learned all the different types of bullfighting, which, if you're confused, you can go listen to her episode. And um, Janet Guthrie mainly stayed with race car driving, although she did do NASCAR and other types of racing along with that, not just NASCAR. Now, the overarching lesson I learned is that it's okay to push yourself sometimes. I get scared sometimes of pushing myself, fearing that I will somehow break like a little china doll. But these gals taught me that it's okay to expect great things from myself and to push hard and even push social standards. As a woman in any society, I feel like this is a valuable lesson to learn. And for me specifically, I'm getting ready to run a half marathon in a couple weeks, and it just encourages me to push harder and that I can do it. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm not saying we should push ourselves to the point where we are seriously in bad shape, but to go for it and to more and more stop being afraid. I honestly almost deferred the half marathon until next year due to a pain in my knee. But between wanting to be with my friends, wanting to see what I'm capable of, and being inspired by these sports gals, I'm going to do it, and I'm going to complete it even if I'm the slowest one there. And yes, I did consult my doctor, and everything's good. So, again, they've inspired me to push myself to an appropriate limit, as opposed to being afraid to even try to push. So that wraps up the sports gals recap part of this episode. But wait, we're not done. If you made it this far, you probably know that this is the end of our full season two of Your Gal Friday. I can hardly believe it. Leah and I started this podcast last year to support Gal's Guide to the Galaxy's mission. Now, Gal's Guide to the Galaxy is a nonprofit that helps spread awareness of women in history, art, science, and culture, and helps spread awareness to young girls and boys alike. Um, we love to teach people about women of history and share even our individual knowledge as well. And we believe that if young girls actually see other women in their dream job, they will be encouraged to reach for the stars. So we strive to raise awareness of these awesome role models who are hidden in the shadows of history. That way, young girls who want to be an astronaut can actually see other women who are astronauts and not feel discouraged right off the bat. That's our mission. 
Now, if you haven't looked into Gal's Guide to the Galaxy yet, I strongly suggest you check it out at galsguide.org. It has a lot of great information about many, many inspirational women and the different things we do as a nonprofit. Now, I'm actually a board member to Gal's Guide to the Galaxy now, and Leah is the founder, so we work very, very closely with the nonprofit to help spread the word about these awesome women. Now, Gal's Guide even teaches at schools, hosts special events, and that's actually something that I will tell you a little more about later in this episode. Now, you may notice for your Gal Friday, we divided up the episodes a bit differently. Last season, we did the themes of art, history, science, and culture, and every week we rotated between these four themes. So this season, we decided to go with a different format with what we call story arcs. What that means is that every group of three gals were connected in some way and all collectively told a story as well as the stories individually. Now, each story arc began with a prologue episode and ended with an epilogue episode. These were meant to be both informative and to give us a mini break to catch up on the research for our next group of ladies. Now, as fun as this show is, it does take a lot of research and extra time outside of actually recording. So the breaks for us were helpful and hopefully to you guys too. Now, if you do have an opinion on how you like the way we did season two, please let us know. We love the feedback. I personally thought that the prologue and epilogue episodes were a ton of fun. And honestly, at first I was worried that they would sound boring or be non-informative or actually feel like a buffer, but I really think we did well with keeping it engaging and informative and a lot of fun and not feeling like we were cheating you off of an episode or something, which we didn't. We put our heart and soul into every episode, just like we did last season. So let us know if you thought the same. What did you think of it? Did it Was it helpful? Did it help you reflect on the gals more? Did you guys see the story arcs and the themes on your own without us recapping? I'm curious. I want to know. Now, with all of that being said, We ended up recording 25 episodes and covering 20 different gals over five different story arcs. Now, if you're doing quick math, you know that 20 is a little high of a number. What happened is, in our Hamilton the Musical story arc, we actually covered all five Skylar sisters in one episode, and in another episode, we covered the two Theodosias, making the count 20 instead of 15. Now, in case you missed some of the episodes or you just want to recap, here are our story arcs and the gals that we covered this season. Story arc 1, Hidden Figures, the movie. Dorothy Vaughn, Katherine Johnson, and Mary Jackson. Story arc 2 was Hamilton the Musical. We covered the Schuyler sisters, who were Angelica, Eliza, Peggy, Cornelia, and Catherine. In our second episode, we covered Martha Washington, and our third episode was Theodosia and Theodosia Burr. Our third story arc was Funny Gals. We covered Lucille Ball, Lily Tomlin, and Ellen DeGeneres. Our fourth story arc was Gals Who Rock, and we covered Sister Rosetta Tharp, Joan Jett, and Tina Turner. And our last story arc, as you know, was Sports Gals, where we covered Janet Guthrie, Babe Didrikson Zaharias, and Conchita Centron. So for me to tell you the story arc that was the most fun for us would be pretty difficult, so I'll just let you know why we picked them and loved them each individually. Now, Hidden Figures is a movie that Leah fell in love with since the day it was first coming out. As you may know, she loves space, and she loves seeing women championed forward, and this movie had a lot of her favorite things. Now, black history is a passion of mine, plus I also love stories about strong women, so I naturally fell in love with this movie as well. So it was kind of a no-brainer that we wanted to know more about the the real gals behind this movie, and it was not even a debate on if this should be a story arc or not. That was probably our first confirmed story arc. Now, Hamilton is a American musical that I became obsessed with, and so had Leah's two daughters. We kept quoting lyrics at her until she finally caved and listened through it. Leah fell in love, and we talked back and forth in just Hamilton lyrics for a few weeks, and it was a grand time. So Hamilton was a big push for a story arc. 
Now, when we learned that there were more Skylar sisters than Angelica, Eliza, and Peggy, we just had to cover them and not exclude them from the narrative like most history had. We also learned that dear Theodosia, Burr's daughter, was named after Burr's wife, so we wanted to cover both of them as well. Now, we had an interesting time trying to figure out how to divide this up, because I, at the time, had not thought of Martha Washington, but Leah did, and it was a brilliant addition. Now, Martha isn't technically in the musical, but she is mentioned exactly once when Martha Washington named the feral tomcat after Alexander Hamilton, which we learned was true, by the way, which is kind of hilarious. Martha did play a bigger part in writing American history, and so we wanted to include her in the narrative. Now, the fun thing about this now is that Leah actually took her family to see Hamilton the Musical in Chicago, I believe, and it was so awesome to hear about their time, and she took her daughter for her birthday, and it turned into this big family event, and I'm kind of jealous, honestly, but it's okay, because I think she got me a keychain. I mean, I'm just so excited for her and her daughters, because they got to see it on stage, and that's just so awesome. So that tells you how much we're invested in our own story arcs. Now, comedy is another love of Leah's, and it fit in with the monthly theme for Gal's Guide to the Galaxy. So Funny Gals was next. We chose these specific women because one inspired the next who inspired the next, and they all represent different generations, which was cool to explore and a lot of fun to be able to actually watch comedy bits and TV shows. Now, another fun thing was comparing the way that these different comedians affected me and Leah growing up. I grew up with the Magic School Bus with Lily Tomlin, and she grew up with Lily Tomlin's comedy bits. Leah remembers Ellen's coming out episode on her show, and I know Ellen from her current talk show and rewatch her um, other shows. Then, of course, there's Lucille Ball. I did not grow up watching, but Leah grew up watching reruns, and I, of course, knew her name, but I learned so much researching. I honestly had no idea how much I would be learning in that episode, but I learned a ton, and it was cool to compare our stories because... I got to go to Paramount and see Lucille Ball's, like, front door and learn about her from there, but I learned so much more just laser focusing on researching and um, doing this with Leah. Now, Gals Who Rock was another theme that fit well with the Gals Guide to the Galaxy monthly theme, and I definitely pushed for this theme, too. Rock is my favorite genre of music, and music plays a huge part in life, in our society. And I thought it would be tons of fun, honestly, if not super difficult to narrow down who we talk about. Now, I was actually thankful for this story arc and our format for the story arcs because Leah introduced me to Sister Rosetta Tharp, and she rocked my world. We can say literally, right? She was basically the inventor and grandmother of rock and roll, and who knew? right? I mean, I, I'm, it's taking my breath away right now. It's, I love her. If you haven't heard anything about her, go listen to her episode, go listen to her music. Honestly, it's that good. It's that inspiring. I'm, I'm very, I'm still very excited about this. I had no idea she existed before this, and it made me so excited to learn about her. Now, again, with the black history, she invented rock and home roll, and it was this gospel singing black woman, and that just makes me so jazzed. Again, go check out the episode if you haven't already. It's, it's a good one. Now, the hardest part covering Gals Who Rock was actually getting Tina Turner songs out of my head. I had those songs stuck in my head for weeks on end, but it was worth it because Tina Turner is also an incredibly amazing and inspiring woman, and it was a lot of fun. Now, our last story arc was Sports Gals. Again, it fit with the monthly theme, and we were originally going to cover Gals of a League of Their Own. And now it's time to drink. We had a running joke in the new Gals Guide to the Galaxy podcast that we should make a drinking game out of how many times we mention a league of their own. Now, if you're a student, obviously, we can't do this drinking game. However, it was just funny to talk about because we mention a league of their own all the time, even in our other podcast. And it just 
kind of comes up. So we decided we should make a game of some sort out of how many times we mention a league of their own. I mean, we love it. It relates to our topics. And it's pretty crazy to see how often it's brought up. And it's not on purpose, honestly. Honest, honest. But alas, we didn't cover the gals of the league of their own due to the lack of information we have on the real life gals and the intensive research research it really would take to find it. I do think we made a good call, though. The three gals that we covered instead of the League of Their Own gals, they were super interesting all in their own light, and I hope the variety was able to touch and appeal to various different audiences just like they touched us. So it's not just about baseball. It's about sports in general. It's about ambition. It's about getting your head in the game and sticking with it and persevering and powering through and so much more and we don't have a movie that also covers it to double this time which is totally fine it's kind of its own unique story arc so that's pretty exciting now i'm not saying this is the last time you're going to hear about a league of their own because you probably will just be prepared now if you like what we're doing and you would like us to continue we do have a patreon page for your gal friday So please, please, please check that out. Even $1 a month helps us out and is very much appreciated. Plus you get some cool perks like uh, behind the scenes, memes ahead of time, and super awesome like desktop backgrounds and all these really cool things that Leo works very hard to provide for you guys. Now, this is set up to create more high-quality podcasts just for you. We are volunteers here at this time, and any little bit helps with maintaining equipment, having special guests, etc. Speaking of help, if you want to put funds towards something that will have immediate impact, Gal's Guide to the Galaxy is actually raising money right now to sponsor an event in November of 2018. Now, the event is at Starbase Indy, and it's called the Uhura Training Academy. It's really, really cool. I mean, you get to learn like the Star Trek gals. You get to learn about all these different things. It's just really awesome. It's a really cool event that you can learn more about on our website. Not from Indiana? That's okay. You can still help. Check out gilesguide.org to learn more about this. Well, that wraps it up for us today and for the season. We're sad to believe me. But the plan is to come back with more gals, more stories, more history, and more love just for you. Now, until next time, I leave you with this quote from our Gals Guide president, your podcast host, and my dear friend Kate Chaplin, a.k.a. Dr. Leah Leach. If you're willing to tap into the energy of a character for a few hours, it's a test run and a roadmap for life. For more information about this week's gal or to check out our previous episodes, visit galsguide.org. To support the show, visit the Gals Guide Patreon page. We love our patrons and offer exclusive perks and behind-the-scenes access for as little as $1 a month. Thank you so much for subscribing to Your Gal Friday.